Okay. So welcome to the Village of Wappingers Falls meeting of the Mayor and Board of Trustees for today, Wednesday, June 24th, 2020. Um, and before we get started with the Pledge of Allegiance, I'll just... Uh, say that I have confirmed with the village attorney that tonight's meeting has been convened in accordance with the governor's March 13th, 2020 executive order 202.1 and all superseding orders, which suspends certain provisions of the open meetings law to allow a municipal board to convene a meeting via video conferencing. In accordance with the executive order, the public has been provided with the ability to view tonight's work session meeting and a transcript will be provided at a later date. We will do a roll call of the board members and I can see that there will be a quorum present for this meeting. I've also confirmed with the village clerk that this meeting has been duly noticed. We've fulfilled our legal notice requirements by posting notice on the village's bulletin boards, faxing organizations, etc., posting a notice on the village Facebook page and its website. So at this time, uh, I'd like to do the Pledge of Allegiance. Okay. I pledge allegiance to the United States of America, to the Republic, to the Republic which is stands one nation, one nation, one nation under God, with liberty, liberty, liberty and justice liberty, liberty, for all. For all. Okay. And I'm just pulling up the agenda. Okay, so John, could you do the roll call? Mayor Alexander. Here. Trustee Marka John. Trustee Marka John. Here. Trustee Davis. Here. Trustee Kamornik. Absent. And Trustee, uh, Trustee Kamornik let me know that she uh, had a family emergency and won't be able to join us. Trustee Huber. Present. Trustee Lemires. Here. Trustee Panessa. Here. Village Attorney Wallace. Here. Okay, I'd just like to remind everybody if you're not speaking to please mute your screen or your phone, Mary. And uh, so the first item on the agenda is a, uh, there's actually, we'll start with uh, KC with the project discussion. So John Zarelski of KC. And I'm gonna stop sharing the screen. Hold on. Okay, John, you can share the screen now. Can't hear him. John, you, you might be muted. We still can't hear you, John. No, we're not hearing you. It's not working, John.
Is this better? That no, is... I can hear you. Okay, I went to a different one. All right, different speaker. Or can you hear me now? I'll go back to trying to share my screen. That seemed to be what hiccuped the whole thing. All right. Can you see? Can you see my screen? That's uh, yeah. We can see it. Oh, I can't hear you now. I can't hear you. Okay. We can we see. <laughs> okay, you can see it. Apparently, the sound is just still through the headphones. Um, on my end. So anyway, so going back to, let's start at the top. Uh, scroll up. So for any reason, Park. So um, Sukone has been on site pretty much most of the month. There are other projects. Uh, they've been sharing back and forth, sharing time between the two projects. They've been moving along very well. They've got the lower outlook is nearly complete. Um, the retaining wall for the upper outlook is um, it's quite a ways. It's like 70% complete. Um, they've been paving the stairs and the, um, the landing will be graded uh, beginning July. And they're still shooting for the, um, the September completion date. And now there is a, some discussion about, um, John Carriage had talked about the roof and brickwork on the building, the small building near the front. And um, there's a lot of activity this month, so they're asking that the, the other contractor be there um, early July and that they make sure that they schedule and coordinate with them and KC ahead of time so that they know when they're going to be there. Uh, moving forward. And John Karch, do you have something scheduled for that? Or do you have something planned, John Karch? Yeah, I do. Uh... I don't know if you've noticed, but the bricks are starting to fall off on different portions of the cobbler building. And the reason they're coming off is because the roof is shot and water is running down from the parapet, cascading down along the red bricks, pulling the mortar out. So before I can get the uh, brickwork done, I need to get the roof done. And but I'll coordinate that with uh, KC. Is that is that we have we have someone lined up to do the work on the roof? Yes. Okay. Okay. Sorry to interrupt. Just one minute. That's, that's okay. Way. I'd rather you did it while we're talking while we're talking about it. It's easier that way. Going forward to the um, the tap uh, pedestrian safety improvements. The um, they did have the pre construction meeting on the fifteenth. The highway work permit has been issued, and they're anticipating beginning um, early in July on that work. So just make sure everybody knows what's going on. If they start asking questions, you can tell them. On that note, did we did they talk about what, what kind of traffic disruptions and are there anything? Is there anything that we need to share with the business owners like we did the last time? It wouldn't hurt so that they know what's going on, but. Um, and this is, and we can we can coordinate that to make sure everybody knows going forward. So um, I'm sure there's going to be some disruption because it is drainage improvements. We're going to be digging trenches and things. So there'll be some. So we probably should have a discussion with everybody that's going to be impacted. Okay. Okay. All right. So contract five, we're moving ahead. I'm coordinating with the with the town because for their pump station to make sure that we have a connection point and their and um, minimize the the interruptions or disturbances once they start building. So I've been in contact with um, the town of Wappinger's engineers and uh, they actually just sent me their plans for what they're doing. So we're going to make sure they work well with ours, and then they'll be going in for um, review and approval to everybody. So that's moving ahead quickly. The USD application is nearly complete. We'll be going in very soon. That is a rolling deadline. So um, we've got most of the information we need. I think we're in pretty good shape there. Um, the future water improvements. Now we did put a new listing up on um, drinking water state, state revolving fund, which you can see all the things that we've included. There's the water mains. Um, they're still shown as eight inch water mains, but we can do them as 12 inch um, for the for the um, North Mazir and near the bowling alley. 
that's not a problem. We put in for the water filter plant and also for upgrading both the windlass and Delavern tank. Um, Bayside Creek trunk line sewer easement. Um, the survey is complete on our end. Um, site conditions, um, as you might recall, during the filling needed that the, the new survey was to be constructed. We just need to make sure that the easement that needs to be updated includes it, it should the, the description should include utility and recreational trail easement just so that we have that um, ability to put other utilities there if we need it going forward. Um, we are working on the, the Bain Park survey master plan. And we do again have the draft map uh, survey is complete. Um, there's going to be a kickoff meeting probably in September sometime we'll have to schedule. We're working on a basically conceptual master plan for the for the park um, and the site design for the playground equipment. And of course, we'll have to fill out the long form EIF as part of that. The Greets trap has been progressing and moving forward. We do need to schedule a, a committee meeting at some point um, in the near future. Again, this is a two year grant, but we're pushing to get this done this year. Um, on the Brownfield assessments program, we're moving ahead on the bleachery. I mean, we're initially told we couldn't go ahead on it, but uh, the EPA has now given us permission to once we demonstrated that there was ownership there. So we are preparing a um, health and safety plan and a work plan for that area. Um, Casey is coordinating with the village on that. Once we have those in place and their approval from the EPA, we should be able to move forward on that um, pretty quickly, get out there and get the phase two underway. <coughs> the infrastructure study, um, has draft has been in, nothing has changed on that, and nothing really has changed on the Paji Terrace. We have no, let me know if you need anything on either of those. Okay, that's everything with uh, Casey. Any question? Uh, any questions from the yes, board? Yes, I got one. John. Sure. Yes, I got one. The, uh, we, we talked about this once before, but the uh, the sewer main that's going to go where Triumph West is, it goes into Dunkin' Donuts parking lot or that that parking lot. Yes, we, we're still going to be doing that, aren't we? Because yes, we're, we're going right. to tie that into um, the contract five work. Okay, um, we'll just roll that into that as part of it, because yeah, Virginia was basically done at the site that was removed from contract four. Um, scope of work. So we will tie yeah. that into contract five. Now that the tanks are removed and we can move forward on that, I just would um, just make sure we get the easement that we need for the sewer. And I think we already have the easement. I think we already have the easement. I was under the impression that that was still wasn't officially filed yet. We had asked okay. for it, but it hasn't been officially filed. I can check with Nancy on that because she's been following this. Okay. But, uh, my understanding is let's just make sure we have the easement in place before we we um, go ahead with connecting their sewer. All right. Keep our fingers crossed nothing happens. Yes. Yeah, so we have been working uh, with the attorney on the easements and there's more work to do, but we'll let you know. Excellent. So we have a little bit of time before this goes out to bid. So again, again we'll include that in the, the scope of work for contract five. All right. Now, if, now, one other thing about that project, if, if something shall happen like an emergency, I mean, we, we might have to get in there and fix that over there. And that's the whole reason why we are doing this. You know what I'm um, saying? You mean you're talking about by the autoglass place? Yeah, in that plaza there. Right. No, well, that's why we're looking for the easement so that we have the right to go out there All right. and do it. That's and I thought we had it because we were digging a hole out there anyways. Ooh, yeah, it was never officially filed. That's but again, we, we're, work, we, we're working through that through. Yeah, we, we have no one when one easement is good and we need the, uh, another easement. So uh, we're working on that. Okay. Are we almost that? I think so. so. Okay. Well, I'll take my leave then. Good evening, everybody. Oh, no more questions for John? Any questions? Okay, um, very good. Thank you, John. Just take right, your, yeah. stop sharing yeah. your, stop sharing. Uh, you don't want to, you don't want to see that forever? <laughs> all right. Okay. 
Very good. Thank you, John. All right. Bye now. Okay. At this time, I'd like to uh, introduce Corey Yusevich, the um, grant writer, and ask him to give us an update of what's going on. Yes. Hello. I don't know. Um, hi, Corey. Hi. I, I, saw, I think most people here know me, but if some don't, yes, my name is Corey Yusevich, uh, the grant writer. A lot of the stuff I was going to update you on, John just touched up on which was Franny Reese, um, how they're commencing TAP. We have our next TAP meeting on July 1st, and that should be the official pre-construction meeting. And then from then, they'll actually start start working. So um, I don't know what kind of warning they give, but mid-July is when they're probably gonna start getting at it. So if they are gonna tell businesses, mid-July would be a good time. Uh, and yes, EPA, our phase twos are underway. And we finally were able to start phase ones um, now that the EPA is giving us access. Uh, but for the grants, um, BOA, we sent in our BOA to the Department of State. Uh, we've been in conversation with them, a gentleman named Dave Ashton, most notably. Uh, they've given us some feedback and we've sent it back in. So at the moment, we've finalized it and we're just waiting on their response to to what we sent them in. So um, at the moment, that's that's on, on the close, it seems, which is good. Uh, LWRP, Matt and I have worked extensively with KC. I don't know if John brought that up, that um, we have made a list for every single municipality in the county. And we've talked about the problems in each section and what um, what projects they can do to alleviate pollution coming into the water and we've even shown different grants that would help fund these projects. So that's being incorporated into the water characterization report. And we hope we hope that'll get uh, the ball rolling either late this year or next year on, on fixing some of our water issues at least. For the county grants, um, shared service, we are on the verge of closing those out. We've talked with um, Christy Bonomo, a bunch in the past two weeks, actually, and even today, um, about closing those out. And our tri municipal uh, grant, which is a municipal innovation grant, I'm sorry, which is a municipal innovation grant for a new digester at the tri muni wastewater treatment plant. Um, that's we're, we're moving towards signing a contract for that in the near future as well. So um, county's still not fully back in the office. That's why that's been kind of slow, but they're about to jump right back in. So hopefully that can start moving a lot faster. Um, as far as grants that have been written since all of this, we have written a police a highway safety grant for an extra 6,500 um, to hopefully pay for an additional patrolman during vital hours when we feel that there's an additional patrolman might be necessary. Um, that was written about three weeks ago. It was due on, it was actually due on July 1st. So that's one of the grants we've sent in. And then as John said, he, the USDA grant, uh, which I've been working with him and John Bolger on is, is running along swimmingly. So those are the two grants that have been going on since all this has started. Uh, as far as there's two big grants I talked about last year and it's talked about every year. That is the DRI, the Downtown Revitalization Grant, and the CFA. Uh, both of the, this DRI would have been done by now and the CFA would currently being worked on. It would be, it would probably be due in the next week in a normal year. Neither of these things have really come up at the moment. They might not even have them this year, um, but we're keeping our ear to the ground and we're trying to stay posted so when those two come up we're gonna we're gonna jump right on and we've even Matt's had me do a lot for that for just in case whenever we hear it's happening we can just go right in and, and start writing it like like we haven't missed a beat so those are upon my list I think those are the biggest things to update you on at the moment but I can answer any questions if anyone has or if it went too fast retrack 
Um, can we can we talk just a second, just because the clock's ticking? Um, sure. The boathouse. Right. Um, so construction was able to start there. Um, the main contractor, I, I know he just went in for surgery. Um, me and Matt, along with Mike Buffy, who is our the architect on the job for Schwartz, um, we just contacted them recently to get a new timetable for that. Obviously, the project was originally going to be done by now, but once everything hit, things have been pushed. So um, we just opened dialogue with them late last week and then again early this week. So we're just waiting on a timetable from them to see how much longer that'll be. Last time I was there, it seemed just about finished. So if there is more work to be done, I highly doubt it's much more. But uh, so that's where we are at the moment. We're just waiting on a response from them. Any other questions? Um, I have this trustee Lammers. Oh, what, what was the amount of the USDA grant? Was there a figure on, on that? What I don't have it yet that uh, John Bolger was, um, he's with Casey engineering and, and yeah. John Zwerowski. Uh, okay. He was, um, he was sort of finalizing that I was doing, I was doing one part of it and he was doing the engineering part. So I haven't seen that yet, mm -hmm. but I could get you that. I could email that to you. By this yeah. Week. Yeah. Okay. So the water board has seen that and it is um, going to be around $1.5 million for the new filtration plant. And we're looking at if there are any other uh, water projects that we want to include in there besides that. Right. And we right. would wait to see how much we're eligible for a grant and what, and then there's a loan program also and what the terms of the loan program would be before we would go any further. That would come back to the board and the water board uh, before it goes further. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. I think that's it. Yeah. All right. Thank you. I'll stay on, but I'm just putting okay. my audio down. So thank you. All right. Rich will uh, take you off camera. Okay. Uh, so we have the next item on the agenda. So uh, next on the agenda, I'd like to ask the attorney and Brian Murphy if they could talk to us about the uh, notice of violation for the uh, residents on uh, Garden Street. I'll take over for it. Okay. Um, all right, so here before you, you have a practical application of the recent local law you just passed, uh, Article 114 called the Property Maintenance Code. Um, and basically, um, you know, this is a brand new law and here's a brand new enforcement action. Um, and um, it, within the uh, new law, there's a provision that allows the um, the discretion and opinion of, of the building department to determine whether or not uh, a property's grass or, or shrubs or in this case brush and high grass is uh, so high that um, uh, it, the village needs to come on to the property and uh, through the DPW actually take care of the problem and then bill the cost of saying back to the property owner and levy it against the property taxes. So that is basically what we have before you. We have a property on Duchess Avenue, which is right next to 22 Garden Street. The owner was issued a citation order to remedy um, and uh, was served. And within 20 days, um, as per the code, he was entitled to um, be heard before the village board of trustees, um, as and you know, state his case as to why, um, you know, if he had a defense or, or why, um, 
the village shouldn't have to enforce the law. And, you know, sometimes hopefully we'll have our, our residents who have already complied with the statute and there will be no need for this. But in this particular case, there hasn't been any response from the property owner. And now um, I, we asked Brian Murphy to come before the board to explain uh, what he observed. So Brian, you can take it from here. Yes, uh, thank you. Um, yeah, you, you know, a couple months ago, uh, some residents were in front of the, uh, probably four months ago now, whatever, were in front of the board in reference to this property. And we uh, had cited that two separate properties. One is 22 Garden Street. And then this is a vacant piece of land directly behind 22 Garden Street, but it's legally a separate piece of property piece of property with two separate owners. 22 Garden Street, the house was uh, taken in foreclosure. It, this vacant land is still owned by uh, Mr. Siena, who uh, we have sent registered letters to uh, about cleaning up the property with no, uh, with no response back. So this was the first time that we were able, my office was able to use the new law to uh, hopefully get this property cleaned up and uh, and move forwards, you know, with it and be able to take care of it for the residents. And that's about what it is on my end. If there's any questions, you know, obviously I'll answer them. Yeah, just can you explain what you observed and why the property? Uh, we observed and I have pictures that the, the grass right now is a foot and a half to two feet tall easily. Um, and, you know, that's really what's, what I observed so far on this vacant piece of property. Um, there is an unregistered vehicle up on the top of it, but we have to get up there first to figure out, uh, you know, what it is and to be able to uh, run the, uh, the VIN number. <laughs> and that's, that's really it for, for, for this, for the vacant piece of property. The property in front of it that they appear to be one property, but they're not. They're, like I said, legally two separate properties. Um, the front property was um, a big complaint from the neighbors also. The, uh, the one tenant that's still in this house did have a 30 yard dumpster come in um, with some pushing from my uh, office and uh, did clean up a good portion of the exterior. It's not perfect yet, but with this new law and with the guidance of the village attorney, we'll move forward to take care of that also. Okay, so that's basically you have before you a resolution. Um, Mayor, if you want to read the resolution into the record, then the if, board can take if, action. As before you do, Mayor, may I ask a question? Absolutely. The, um, I oh, looked at- Sorry, I was muted. That's okay. I, I looked that property up online. It shows that it was under foreclosure. Did anybody know that? Yeah, well, here, here's, there's two different parcel numbers, okay? And the parcel number dealing with the vacant land, which is the subject matter of this particular enforcement action, is owned by Mr. Cyana with a, a last known property address of 22 Garden Street. And of course, as you know, 22 Garden Street is the property that was foreclosed upon by uh, Flagstar or whatever, Texas, some Texas bank. Nation Star Mortgage. Nation Star. Nation Star Mortgage is now the current owner of the property. That is That parcel is not the subject of this order. Gotcha. Okay, that's, mm -hmm. what, the, that's my, what I was looking for. All right. Mm -hmm. Any other Trustee questions? Davis, the, the property that was for, that is foreclosed, um, we will have back in front of you also. Um, I, I just needed a little bit more time to figure out with the serving of the bank and things like that. It, it's not as easy as just a, a person. Yeah, well, when you serve that, they may clean it too, so who knows? Exactly, but also... Um, when I spoke with Brian, we could not make the timing correct because the um, person who was served with the OTR, the owner, has 20 days. Uh, right. They have to actually schedule a hearing within 20 days. And right. 4th of July holiday coming up, we were going to miss it. So 
that's why we had to wait until um well, I, yeah i could see you could see what yeah so we're, we're in order to comply with the statute and allow for a, a quick hearing you know we, we're gonna have to do it uh you know this upcoming week gotcha mm -hmm. All right, so there is a process I get, uh, that, that occurs now. And once you have um, taken action in the form of the uh, vote in this, of this resolution, um, it will be mailed to the owner. Of course, I expect it will be ignored or it won't be answered. And um, we're gonna be responsible for keeping track of the hours and the, uh, the time and the materials um, so that we can accurately levy against the property and uh you know that person um will have 30 days to contest it but i don't expect that that they'll be here so mm -hmm. are there any uh other questions no i have, a... hey, I have a que craig i have a question sure um you. Would it have to be the DPW to go in, or would the village be able to hire a contractor to go in and do it? Well, it doesn't not, there is no specific department that was named in the statute that is to perform the work. Um, typically, I, we are going to be passing this cost along to the owner of the property, and it's usually cheaper to do it in, in house. But if we don't have the manpower to do it, then, um, you know, you don't have the manpower. So usually it's DPW or the highway department in, uh, that, that I've seen. We're hoping that this, this particular remedy is few and far between, hmm. but it is at your disposal. Okay, are there any other questions? So I'm gonna read the, uh, the proposed resolution, resolution number 262020 of 2020, ordering the abatement of property maintenance violations at uh, 22 Garden Street, this should read, correct? No, it's it's actually Duchess. It's it is Duchess Avenue. Avenue. Duchess Avenue, yeah. Okay. Oh. All right. Good. So uh, it's correctly saying Duchess Avenue, and uh, whereas Thomas Sienna is, Sienna is the last known owner of real property shown on the tax records and the tax map of the village of Wappingers Falls, as parcel ID six one five eight seventeen. 198119 having a street address of Duchess Avenue and whereas there is no record of mortgage on the property and whereas the village received complaints that the property had become overgrown with grass and weeds and that it was unsightly and whereas an enforcement official observed the existence of weeds and or grass on the property that exceeds six inches which violates section 114.6F of the Village of Wappingers Falls Code on June 11th and thereafter issued a notice of violation in order to remedy dated June 11th, a copy of which is affixed hereto, which informed any person in control of the property that they had an opportunity to appear and be heard at this meeting of the Village Board to offer proof that the property is in compliance with the standards of Chapter 114 of the Village Code or that additional time is needed to take corrective action to cure the violation. And whereas an enforcement official of the village filed a written report with the village noting that he had inspected the property and found that weeds and or grass on the property exceeded the six inches and the property was not in compliance with property maintenance requirements of chapter 114. And whereas a public hearing was held on June 24th and all parties in attendance were permitted an opportunity to speak regarding the maintenance conditions of the property and whereas the village board of trustees of the village of Wappingers Falls after due deliberation finds that the height and or the grass on the property exceeds six inches and the property is not in compliance with property maintenance 
that such condition has continued after the order to remedy was duly issued and it is determined that abatement of the high grass and weeds is now required be it resolved that the village board of trustees hereby directs that the enforcement official dispatch the highway department to the property to cut the grass and weeds as soon as possible and be it resolved that in the event that the highway department is unable to mow the property we are authorized to engage the services of a landscape contractor to undertake such work as expeditiously, expeditiously as possible, which is not subject to competitive bidding, and be it further resolved that accurate records of the labor and material costs required to perform the abatement shall be kept so that they can be assessed and levied against the property, and be it further resolved a notice stating the total amount due and the nature of the charge shall be mailed by the village treasurer to the last known address of the person whose name appears on the records in the office of the village treasurer as being the owner or agent, or as the person designated by the owner to receive tax bills or where no name appears to the property addressed to either the owner or agent. Such notice shall have stamped or printed thereon a reference to chapter 114 section 6 F of the village code. The property owner shall have 10 days after a copy of the notice Establishing the costs and expenses as received to challenge any of the costs incurred by the village and be it further resolved that after expiration of the time period to challenge the determination of costs and expenses, the amounts thereof shall be reported to the village treasurer to be levied and assessed against the property and the expense shall constitute a lien and charge on the property which is levied until paid or otherwise satisfied or discharged and otherwise be collected in the same manner and at the same time as other village charges. And be it further resolved that the village clerk is directed to mail the annexed order of abatement, a copy of which is annexed hereto within two days hereof to the property owner at the address shown on said order. And we'll put this up for a vote, but I'm going to ask the attorney if we need to ask if there's anybody from the public that would like to speak a public hearing on this um yeah i, I guess uh if, if they want to comment about it but i do want to ask um brian murphy one follow-up question brian has this property um been remediated um since the order to remedy was served upon him on the, not on to the my property? knowledge no okay so the condition of the property has has remained unchanged correct If there's any member of the public, uh, it, it's at the pleasure of the board if they want to open it up to public comment. Okay, um, so could I have, do I need to make a motion to open up a public hearing? Yeah. So could I have a motion to open up a public hearing on this matter? I'll make that motion. Second. Thanks. I'll second it. Seconded by Trustee Lammers. All those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? So at this time, uh, there might be somebody here on this uh, YouTube. YouTube, and if you're on YouTube and you would like to make a comment about this, what you need to do is go to the <laughs> website. Is that 917 wanting to make a comment? <clears throat> okay, so um, if you are on YouTube watching this uh, on video and you would like to make a comment, you need to go to the Village website and connect to this Zoom meeting using the connection shown on our website for the meeting June 24th, 2020 here who would like to comment on this item okay we're just gonna wait extra time because uh, of the way we're having this meeting mm -hmm. just to make sure that anybody has an, an opportunity to 
make a comment by logging on to this Zoom meeting by using our village website and the link that's shown for the meeting dated 6 24 2020. One, one comment I'd like to make while we're waiting is uh, okay, good. The, the um, new law that was put into place that we recently placed after all this uh, started. I mean, the, this is why we did it. And uh, now we get to uh, exercise the law the way it should be. And uh, everything's done correctly. And uh, this has been We'll see how how it turns out, but it, you know there's been some pretty quick mo quick movement on it, and uh, kudos to everybody for for good work. This is what we what we needed. Mm -hmm. I agree. Yeah. And we have we have gotten complaints from uh, from the neighbors around the property about the condition of it. Correct. Yeah, we got notice from the neighbors. We had uh, we there were several folks that showed up to one of our village board meetings and expressed mm -hmm. their issues with that and other properties. So that uh, triggered the necessity to update the laws. The uh, right. attorney did a great job of uh, updating everything and a lot of input from the department's the mayor. And um, we came up with a final result. Now that the law was passed a couple about a month ago, two months ago, and this is the, uh, uh, end result of the, the law change and how we can afford these issues in the village. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I'm looking, we did receive uh, some comments on the comment form uh, for this meeting, but it is not for this item. So uh, I will wait um one more minute for somebody to log on to the zoom Okay, uh, you still have time. I'm gonna, so, but we are about to end the public hearing. So I don't see anybody logged in to Zoom yet uh, who is raising their hand to talk about this issue or speaking up. Mayor, just uh, remind you to make a motion to close a public hearing at the appropriate time. Yep. So I think we're about to close the public hearing. And, uh, and I think we have, so now just let it show that we're asking to close the public hearing. Uh, could I get a motion to close this public hearing? Motion we'll make it. So I'll go with Trustee Panessa made the motion and who will do the second? Second. Seconded by Trustee Huber, was that or Barka John? Huber. Huber. Okay. Very good. And all those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. So I read the um, resolution and uh, I'd like to ask if somebody would make the resolution as it was read and as it is shown here. Um, so could I get a person to make the resolution? 
I make a motion to accept the resolution. Okay. Scott Davis, second. Second. Seconded by Trustee Panessa. I'm going to do a roll call vote. So I'll say uh, Trustee Huber. Trustee Huber. Trustee Huber, are you a I or a nay? Aye. Aye. Trustee Marco John? Aye. Trustee Komornik is absent. Trustee Panessa? Aye. Trustee Davis? Aye. Trustee Lammers? Aye. And uh, put myself down, uh, Mayor Matt, as an aye. Okay. Uh, the next item on the agenda is I just wanted to touch base with you. I've been working with the attorney on uh, whether or not or how we could have a licensing agreement for the property at Mary Ross Park. The idea is that the park would be improved with a seating area, um, that there would be a, a license agreement for the business to use that seating area to uh, also serve his patrons uh, in exchange of uh, the business owner would bear the cost of putting in the um, improvements to the hardscape at Mary Ross Park. Uh, they would agree that the park portion must be closed by midnight every night and that, um, that their hours would only be, and that they would only use the park during these hours, and that would be Sunday from 1 p.m. to 8 p.m., Wednesday from 2 p.m. to 10 p.m., Thursday from 2 p.m. to 10 p.m., Friday 5 p.m. to midnight, Saturday 3 p.m. to midnight. The park portion must not be used on Monday through Tuesday public access to the park must be allowed at all times. And this means that if somebody was to go to this park and uh, sit in one of the tables that exist at this park, that they could not be told that they have to purchase anything. They would be allowed to use uh, the park without purchasing anything, and they could not be told to leave the park. And unless, of course, they were uh, acting in a way that was inappropriate in the right. park. Uh, public access to the park would be allowed. Their live and recorded music outside the establishment will only be allowed by securing the permission of the third and second ward trustees. Live or recorded music inside the establishment must not be heard uh, out into the street or at the neighboring properties. Park must be maintained by the uh, licensee for this property, and that would include litter, landscaping, and repairs. Uh, there might be a nominal rent, uh, because if this person did what might cost the village between twenty and $40,000, uh, that would be taken into account in this agreement. And the agreement would be uh, renewed each year and would be subject to a review of past noise, congestion, or maintenance issues, or other issues that are like that. Uh, and there might, there, we could talk about adding a section in here that would fine the uh, licensee for events that were too large or loud music. Um, it would be a revocable license. Um, and so the idea here is that this park get improved. Currently it has um, a bulletin board at the park. There is, uh, there, there has not been before the virus any place to sit in the park. There uh, has not been uh, notable use of the park. And it's also thought that the, uh, that the idea behind this concept would be that it would promote outdoor uh, venues in our village center 
And it's the idea that that would be uh, as nice an addition to the village as the divine wine bar, uh, as the proposed pavilion at the Goring Hall location. Um, and so, uh, and maybe even as the proposals that showed up for the Falls View Park uh, idea last week. So, uh, so at the last meeting, excuse me. Um, so there would be insurance, uh, the village would be insured uh, in the amount of $1 million for death or bodily injury at the property. There would be liability uh, insurance, blanket contractual liability, broad form property damage liability. Um, LLC would furnish a copy of the above described policies or a certificate of issuance to and naming the village as additional insured. Um, so those are the highlights uh, to this agreement. And I just wanted to bring this up for further discussion uh, to see if there's uh, any comments about this concept uh, apps in the that have come up for the trustees in the two weeks that you guys have had a chance to think about this. I just want to make one comment that you you when you said you're working with the attorney, you're working with our conflict counsel, Rich Olson. Yes, I'm sorry. Thank you. I'll jump in if nobody else wants to, but I, I think the project's a, a, a good thing for us. I think that it puts a, the park in a position to be better utilized once we're through this COVID uh, phases. Um, it also allows for some more commerce to take place um, in the village if they follow the stipulations and guidelines that uh, we're put into place. Obviously, the insurance is there, um, but I think the biggest the biggest benefit for the village down the road is once once this is all over and things normalize. Hopefully, it does. Um, once it normalizes, we're going to be able to use that park, and it's going to have a better utilization than it's than it's ever had. And uh, I, I just think it's a it's a good thing, and I think that we're touching all the bases so that we're not we're not uh, catering to any, anybody specific and that it's allowed and, and, and it's being going to be privately funded. The only question I have is when everything is over and things are back to a normal basis, um, are, are we, we going to have tables in there? Are they going to remain or what's going to remain after it's all over? That, that's the only question I have. Uh, I think we should put that in there if that's what the board wants, and uh, we should allow you know allow that to to be a part of it because obviously we're trying to create a, a seating area in the village center and in the off hours it would be very easy to use that seating area by visitors as well as um, during during uh, his licensed time there, so right. I think if that's the desire by the village, we should add that right list. Yeah, yeah, I you know in in the form of like benches or something, you know, just some place for, for folks. Well, to they're see. gonna what they're gonna do, um, Brian is they're gonna put um, they're gonna put tables and stuff in there now. I don't. And, and I'm not a, just a little cloudy. Maybe it's me and I missed something, but I'm a little cloudy on the design phase. It, they, they gave us a mock, a mock presentation, drawing presentation mm -hmm. uh, back at the last meeting, and it was great, and it, it looked good, right. and it served a purpose, and it, I, I mm -hmm. really liked the way it wrapped around the back and utilized all the space in there. It really makes it kind of a cool park, and they greened it up, and they, they made a nice design. I just want to make sure that when it's all over, that we have something remaining there that keeps it a nice looking park and that right. they, people can utilize whatever's there. So that's, that's really where I'm coming from. Right, 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 yeah. Um, and well, you know, as a musician and entertainer, um, the, uh, the aspect of maybe having, you know, music either piped in or, or, or done out there is good, but I, I would want to be, I would be cautious in terms of making specific 
what the time would be. Because even as a musician, I think like, you know, maybe even on a weekend, 10 o'clock, some folks might want to go to bed. <laughs> they don't, they're not interested in hearing me, you know, howling into the, into the night. Um, yeah. So, you know, as long as that is, is you know, and, and like I said, I can kind of see that from both sides as a performer and as a listener. When I want to go to sleep, I want to go to sleep. Well, we got a noise ordinance that, yeah. you know, is yeah. strictly uh, adhered to. Yeah. Okay, good. Good, good. I'm the new kid on the block, so that was probably a dumb question. <laughs> and they, and they talked, they talked no, us about that. No dumb question. Yeah, they talked to us about that, and they seem, you know, they, they just want to be able to do business and sell some food, and, and that, there's nothing yeah. wrong. Great idea. Again, I like I said, though, I want, after it's all over, I just want to make sure that we know beforehand what it's going to be, what it's going to be like, and what it's going to look like after mm -hmm. we get through the COVID pro situation. That's, a, that's yeah. the only thing I'm asking. Right. right. Okay. And the only the other thing that I would add to this list is that the village would retain the right to reserve the use of the park, even if it was during the operating hours. Um, so, yeah, maybe something in there with a written notice that we're going to use utilize the park on a certain day and time, you know, at our discretion of the board or however you wanted to put it. That, I mean, look at that. That's that's like spectacular. That's that is that's very nice, yeah, very nice. Compared to what's there now, it's not even it's not even user friendly for anything. It's got a sure, it's got a uh, 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 plaque on the front of it, and there's really nothing there. But you see from this, it uh, extends to the back. There's other additional seating around the back. The greenery stays on the on on uh, Mark or Mill Street. Um, the fencing, I mean, it's 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 beautiful. You, yeah. It's full, full utilization of that park. Matt, can I say something? Yes, Mary. Please. Please. I, oh, I just please. think hi. I think it's important that everyone know that you know we are not going to forget that this is Mary Ross Park. That there will be a plaque put up there and identifies right. it as Mary Ross Park and that some of those elements that are in the hardscape right now, like the, the beautiful Japanese maple towards the front and the um, roses that are up there are going to be repurposed into another area. Uh, so, you know, we're not, we're not destroying this. And I know that that's a concern that this is, you know, this is a special place that was done for Mary. So I want people to understand that uh, having known Mary, I think she would be over the moon seeing what this looks like and knowing that this is a place named after her. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I can com completely agree. Mary would be, to, to quote her, in one of her favorite words, she said, her words was lovely. And that's what this thing is. It's lovely. It really is. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, Mayor, may I make a comment, please, also? Brian Murphy? Yes, please. Yep. I just, the, the signage on that building should go through the planning board because that's not what's there. I just want. Okay. Well, we'll, we'll, maybe we'll put, we could add that in here that all signage still has to go through the planning board process. Thank you. That's all. Any other comments? From anyone? I think okay, the big, one, one other big key. Uh, big key. Uh, hold on, Scott. Just let me do this so we can use uh, the time tw in a two different ways. So if you're on YouTube watching this meeting and you would like to make a comment about Mary Ross Park, please log on to the Village website and click on the Zoom meeting link for June 24th, 2020. And uh, please feel free to make a comment. Go ahead, Scott, I'm sorry. Okay, no, that's fine. The, the one other key takeaway for folks is to realize that this isn't just for any specific uh, vendor or restaurant. This is for an open park and that folks can go in there 
freely whenever they want. Um, the hours restriction is for uh, the ability for the restaurants to utilize this or vendors to use the space. So um, it is an open park and it utilizes an open park and eventually after COVID's over, my the God's ears, once COVID's over, it'll go back and still be able to utilize, be utilized by everybody. Mm -hmm. Matt, if I could just add one more thing, it's Cindy Latino. Yep. I should, when Brian was mentioning the signage, it just occurred to me, one of the really big things is that it's clearing out the municipal parking sign so people can actually see it and know that there's a parking lot back there. Right now, it's very hard to see that municipal parking sign. So relocating it and making it more visible, it will create a big impact. Okay. Can I uh, just say something? Uh, this is Adam Loricello. Oh, yes, Adam. Thank you. Um, quickly, uh, well, uh, one question and then one comment. Um, so is there is there a time frame that this expires to uh, as a as a place for the, the business or is it just going to be that way indefinitely? Uh, so I think we could talk about that. But, you know, if just as uh, so I'm thinking that just as businesses are currently okay, you know, that it, as there is an allowance for businesses to use uh, the sidewalk space that they don't own in front of their business, that this would be similarly suited. Uh, but the way it's written now for everybody to know, and the reason that we're having this discussion is because we're looking for uh, input is that it's written now that it would be, um, there would be a rent fee and that it would be renewed annually. And so at some point, the rent, what is the, the rent fee? Is that something that's able to be? So I think that uh, we would determine that. So I don't, were you here when I was talking about it at the beginning? Yeah, yeah. Okay. so. It you know it would depend on the estimated cost of the improvements to the park, right. and I think that that would get factored in, and that it might be a nominal rent amount uh, for a uh, period of time. Mm -hmm. But I think I would add that uh, rent after the park improvements are amortized, yeah, uh, be adjusted. That's the only fair way to do it. To a fair market value. Yeah, I was really just thinking it because of the other places that do have patios that have to pay the rent on it. But I will. I think one thing that I really wanted to say is I commend you guys for thinking outside the box and doing something like that. Like that is amazing, not only for the residents, but it's such a great gesture toward that, toward all the businesses, but the vinyl room, you know, to, to, to think like this and have the municipality like behind their small business. I think that it's really huge. And I think you all, it's awesome to see that. I, I didn't expect it to be on this scope and it's really impressive. And as mm -hmm. someone who lives here, it's beautiful. It's going to be awesome to pass by, you know, and once it's a park, my clients, my, my, um, you know, lobby is, is diminished right now. They can kind of hang out there, but my kids can, it just is exciting. And I think you guys are awesome for, for for responding the way you did to that that's all okay. all right so i've added quite a few uh things to the list based on the comments and i, I so i'm going to read what i've added to this and uh i've added uh after the fines for events that are too large or loud music um i've added that the village would be able to reserve the use of the park uh, seating would have to remain so that off hours visitors could still visit uh, when even when the business isn't open and the signage changes must be approved by the planning board any signage changes and that the rent after the park improvements are amortized would be adjusted to a fair market value. Um, so I, and I, 
I think uh, that, you know, Mary Ross Park is so that when you see this video, it's only two sections and the village actually has a long history of allowing restaurants to use village property uh, pretty liberally. And so um, there are other areas where the village has either not contested uh, whether or not it's, it's property or allowed people to use off uh, site property uh, without, um, without contesting it. And uh, there are, um, and then certainly during this COVID crisis right now, we're doing just that. So this is meant in that spirit. But when you see this spot right here that I'm gonna pause it at, so you see this back section, um, I don't, uh, it, it's not clear to me that that would be only useful to this parcel, but that this might be something that would be useful for other areas. So we might be able to open that up to um, more than just this one restaurant. So this might be for any East Main Street restaurant that's located there, if they can make a connection to it, or if, it's, if they're able to seat people at that location. Um, so Mary Ross Park does not include this back section. This, this is a concept that would show you something that might happen in the future and there would have to be either uh, an amendment to this license agreement or a, um, an additional license agreement. Any other comments on this? Okay, if there's no comments, then I'm taking it that the board is uh, okay with uh, me taking these back to the, um, to the attorney, Rich Olson, who's working on this for the village, uh, and uh, to talk to the owner of the uh, final room. And uh, then we would bring back a, com a complete document, have a, another meeting. I think it should be a public hearing uh, because it would need to have an environmental assessment form filled out. It would need to go through Seeker. Um, and if that's okay, then I would, I would uh, like to keep going. So I don't need a vote, but I would like to ask each uh, trustee one by one if you're okay with me proceeding. And I'll start, uh, start with the first time I did a roll call, I'll start with the second word this time. So Mary, are you okay with me proceeding with this and bringing uh, another document back to the board? Yes. Okay, uh, Kevin, are you okay? I, I'm perfectly fine with this. This is a great idea for the village. Okay, how about Billy? Yes. Okay, and Scott, are you good for me to keep going with this? Absolutely, yes. Okay, and Brian Lammers? Can I come back at the next meeting with another uh, document that's more uh, complete for your consideration? Did we lose Brian? Sorry, my microphone was muted. Oh, yes. Okay. You're okay? Okay, so, yeah. all right, very good. Then we will uh, continue on with the meeting and uh, Okay, so uh, the next item on the agenda is, uh, I'm gonna let John Carge, our clerk, talk to us about the landscaping bid. Mm -hmm. All right, consistent with previous practices, a, I, uh, Mayor, can you put up the uh, notice to bidders? Is what it we've done in the past. I know where it is, okay. I would just like to show the board how this is done because it's only done like once every four years. So <clears throat> uh, typically this bid would go out by the uh, DPW, but uh, I've done it. Uh, I did it the last time, so I did it this time. It's a notice to bidders that the village of Wapius Falls is seeking proposals for cutting of grass, recreational facilities, municipal building areas, and the following locations. 
Bain Park, Veterans Park, Temple Field, Fisher Park, End of List Road, Route 9, Mazir Park, MIA Park, List Road Park, Eugene Derrigan Park, Franny Reese Park, Village Hall and Police Stations. So this went into our uh, official newspaper and it was published on the 10th of June. And what I said was specifications for the contract terms will be communicated to bidders 9 a.m. June 17th, 2020 at Mazir Park. Sealed bids will be opened at 10 a.m. June 23rd, 2020 at the Village Hall located 2582 South Avenue, Wappingers Falls. So I did put it in the paper. I did meet with bidders in Mazir Park at 9 a.m. June 17th, of which there was only one contractor there, went over the specifications and opened the bids yesterday uh, in presence of uh, Heather McCormick. It was a sealed bid from New England Greenscapes, that's our current contractor. And uh, what his bid was for April 1st, no, to November, April 1st, 2020, November 30th, is monthly payments of $2,850. The annual contract would be $22,800. Now that's not only cutting grass, that's the leaves in the fall, that's uh, trimming of the hedges. And more over, it's when there's times like now where the grass is brown and it's not gonna be cut for a while, that I work with the contractor to mix things. So for example, instead of cutting grass this week, oh, by the way, we kept the contractor on during COVID because we didn't have anyone else and, and we were allowed to do that. So he's still on for that purpose. But today he had a man up at the, uh, the water treatment facility, weed whacking underneath all the solar arrays, for example. So in lieu of cutting, they were up there and they did that. There are other times when I have something else I'll have him do when he's not cutting grass. So I just wanted to point out to you that um, I, I watched him pretty closely and I know the mayor works with him and I think some of you have worked with him as well. Now it's a 2% increase over last year's uh, payment. So, uh, again, consistent with our purchasing procedures, advertising for bids, meeting with contractors, opening the bids. He's the only bidder, and uh, that's the long and short of it. So I would ask the village board to approve New England Greenscapes for the balance of 20 and 21 season. I'll make the motion, John. Who's that now? Kevin Hewitt, approve of New England landscaping. Okay, I'll can I? Who seconded that? Seconded by Trustee Davis. Okay. Uh, Scott? Scott Davis, yep. seconded. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Me. Okay. All right, so uh, next item. Uh, let's see. Okay, the next item on the agenda is a report from Cindy Latino, the Recreation Director. Yeah, I think what's showing um up there on the agenda that's been put out is the uh, uh, new government delivery system. So that was a report that I gave back at the first two meeting, and that is what went out on as a test one to see how well it would be delivered. So I do have some other things that I need to bring up with this report. So it's not showing those things. So I'm, I'm just going to read what I have to say, and then we can uh, um, discuss it. The first item I'd like to bring to the board is um, 
I would like to request that the um, village board can um, please sign a purchase order uh, allowing us to um, have compact playground, which is who we are getting the playground equipment from from Game Park to sign a purchase order agreement. Uh, by doing so, even though we aren't going to be able to install that playground until next year sometime, it's holding the price on the equipment, the delivery charges, and the installation of it. Um, we got an excellent price from them, basically because we piggybacked off other bids that they did for the county, and we're allowed to do that in terms of selecting equipment. Um, it's a, a tremendous savings to us. And um, they're only asking for a $10,000 good faith deposit for this, which is exceptional. Um, I, you know, think that this is something I would like to have the board approve because, as I said, it's uh, considered my savings. I think if Corey's still on, he can give you the figures. I, I believe just off the top of my head, I know we saved about $30,000 because they gave us the 2019 prices versus the 2020 prices. I don't know if Corey's on. Corey's not on the so the um, equipment would be for 121 not to exceed $121,000 and that includes an in installation and so the question is whether we would put down is it a 10% uh, no it's ten, a flat 10,000 it's not 10,000 10, so it's not even 10 it's not even 10% so it's a $10,000 deposit uh, the village is able to do that uh, we do have a grant for $100,000 to put towards this. Um, is the board okay? Where is this going? I'm sorry, it's very hard to understand, Cindy. Right, Thank so this is for the playground equipment that would be located at the corner of Lower Henry and Clapp Avenue that we had the uh, voting on at the library. Did I, did I say enough there? You're mute, Mayor. Oh. Yeah, that's good. Sorry. Okay. Uh, are there any, Cindy, is there anything else we need to think about with that? Uh, there's other things, but I, you know, I would ask if someone would entertain a motion to allow you to sign that purchase order. Okay. So, um, could we get a motion? I'll make it. Okay. And this is for uh, Compan Compani. Is that how you pronounce it, Cindy? It's Compac. Compan? K O M P A C, Compac. Okay. And uh, so it's, is there a second? Second. I'll second. Seconded by uh, Trustee Huber. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Aye. Okay, Did, was that a nay? Okay, so everyone, so everyone was an I. Okay, uh, and uh, I can continue with the report. Yep. I got this stuff. Okay. Um, so uh, the recreation committee is uh, exploring a possible small playground park on Hillside Avenue uh, near the water tower. We will approach by um, residents in that area asking if that was a possibility. The Sheep Road PTA has offered us a donation of a climber that was purchased by them and not able to be used at Sheep Road Elementary School. Um, since we, have we had previously discussed the possibility of moving uh, equipment from Canale Park over there and repurposing Canale, um, we would still be looking maybe just to take the swings from that other park and relocate them. Um, and then uh, we probably at Canale would do some more adult amenities such as larger picnic tables, maybe a bocce ball court or a push and pit, something along those lines for adults. Um, so uh, we're asking the board's permission to, uh, we would like to use um, some restricted funds from the rec uh, restricted fund uh, board to do this. Um, and we would be looking just to uh, use money that has been um, contributed to that account from any new construction in the whole side down the avenue area. Um, and we would just like to be able to proceed and go forward with getting some quotes on fencing and other things. 
So I'm okay with that, but I am aware that it, this project will definitely need more than what was contributed from the housing on Hillside. Yeah. So yeah. I think this might cost as much as what was contributed um, there because of that ravine. So, uh, but, so I think this is a, just a good way to start, but I think once we start the project, it's gonna go um, further. But I think that that's a good use of that property and uh, I would be in favor of that. Would we, would we designate that park area? We would need to do that. And which we'd have to do the, the environmentals and I'm just, I, I, I think that there needs to be something. I mean, I, I, I have no problem with it at all, but I just think that there needs to be something, some kind of drawings or something put out there so we, we know what it's going to look like way ahead of time. And I think in this case, though, we could do sketch. We could get uh, limited equipment and do a sketch drawing of this yeah. site and work with uh, force account label our highway department more on this part. So I think you could get a lot done actually. Yeah, no, that's I think I we have like to make sure we designated parkland, I think is the most important thing. I would like to see a sketch also, you know, some concerns about some fencing around the area where that's gonna be. Um, and then the fire whistle that sits up there as well. Okay, Cindy, so um, I don't think there's enough here to take a vote on, but I think the intent of the board is to definitely allow you to move forward. Is that good? Uh, yeah, I'm just looking. I just want to get uh, some, a contractor out there about the fence and to get some bids on it. Because yeah, I would also, and I would talk to the highway department and see if that's something they might be able to install too. Okay, I hadn't so, thought about asking them about the fence. That's fine. Yeah. Okay. Okay, uh, can I just uh, hold off here? I just, uh, we have been, we are being visited by a young man who is in Boy Scouts in Troop 25. And uh, his name is Jackson. And he's uh, taking part in uh, this meeting and observing it in order to get his a merit badge. And so uh, we would like to acknowledge him and thank him for uh, visiting with us tonight. And I don't know if there's anything you want to say, Jackson, but we appreciate you coming. Yeah, 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 no, uh, th thanks for having me here. Okay, that's very good. I, I definitely enjoyed scouting and uh, <laughs> the best things that I ever did in my life. So um, keep up with it and, and enjoy uh, this time while you have it. Yeah, you know. Okay. All right. Thank you, Jackson. Thanks, Have Jackson. You're, you're gonna Thanks, Jackson. Your, your, um, oh, you're yeah. going to give him your email um, to, to send the, uh, what you said you were oh. going to send? John, oh. you still on? Was it? Was send, it? Your, send your email to me. Uh, you can get it on the website or I'll give it to you right now if you want to write it down. Oh, it, you're, it's on the website? Yeah. yeah village, okay. village clerk. Oh. Village, yeah. Um, okay, so we'll yeah we'll email you and you can send okay, it. Sure, well, just I just sent it by chat, so you have it now. Um. It's, um <laughs> hey, you sent it to gosh. me privately, so you can you can include it to Jack. Oh, I'm sorry, I sent it to the wrong person. Oh. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> send it to the wrong person. From, uh, oh, there it is. JN. Yeah, okay, God. Okay, wait, we should write that down. Here. Write down. Take, take a picture of them. You're, you're doing the very bad job. Mm hmm. It's okay, then. Thank you. Let's see. Hey, Jackson, we're going to keep going with our meeting, but uh, thank you very much for coming. We appreciate having you and look forward to seeing your, your accomplishments in scouting. Yeah, no, thank you. All right, take care. Bye bye. Okay, I'm Send I'm just gonna write down this email and then I'm gonna go. Okay. <laughs> All right, you. Cindy. Why don't you keep going? Okay. Um. So, uh, 
previously in that report that went out through the government delivery system, it said that we had canceled all of our concerts due to lack of funds. Um, we, we have had two of the concerts that I had previously booked have generously offered to do their concerts free of charge. So yes, we will have two concerts in the Missouri Park on um, uh, July, I'm sorry, it's up to this right here. July 24th with a rainy date of July 26th, and that would be the Southern Duchess Concert Band. And on August 21st with a rainy date of August 22nd would be the Big Band Sound. Um, they were, this, this, I was just blown away by the, their generosity to do this. I was very, very excited because it was very difficult for me to, I anticipated being able to have them back. Big Band Sound was one of the original bands that I had when I started the concert series back in the late 80s. So it was kind of exciting to think that they would be back in the village and playing again. So um, we are going to have a couple of concerts. We've also been uh, approached by county players that they would like to do some type of performance and we're not really sure what they can do yet. But that, to keep that in mind, that that is something that we might be doing um, as well. And then I've also been in contact with the uh, Historical Society and they have a couple of events that they will also do um, for village residents in the park. So we're coordinating dates at this point uh, to uh, be able to do that. We do have to implement social distancing. I've already coordinated that with the two bands that I have. Um, uh, so are you asking me to turn up my speaker? I'm, you want me to turn up my speaker? I don't, I'm not asking you to do anything. Um, I just, I thought something came up on chat room. Is somebody asking you Oh, oh yes, yes, speaker? somebody's asking you to turn up your speaker, sorry. Okay, I'm gonna see if I can figure out how to do that. I'm not sure I know how to do that. Um, maybe if I come closer. Does that help if I come closer? I can hear you fine. Can everybody else hear me? Yeah, I can hear you pretty good. Yeah. I'll, well, I'll try my best for everybody else, Kevin. You already know about this, I think. So. so I mentioned that county players might do some type of a play and that the Historical Society We'll be doing a couple of things in the park along with the two concerts that we plan on having. We do need to maintain social distancing. We will be marking off spots in the park as well as marking off stage area for those bands that are going to be uh, performing on the gazebo. So that means that they will be on the gazebo and on that front uh, patio area that's kind of like some dancing and stuff, but that's where they will be uh, performing off of. So any questions about that? No? Okay. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry, hold on, I'm getting a message here. Oh, Thank you, Scott. I'll suggest that to them. Uh, so, um, uh, so, uh, I'm sorry. So, we are in the process this week of reopening all of the parks and playgrounds in our village. Um, in order to do that, there were some things that had to be in place. And um, so far, what we have done is mulch was installed underneath the playground apparatus at um, Getz Park and also at Temple. I did not put it underneath the playground apparatus at Nally because we didn't feel that we needed it at this point in time. And I really wanted to have some direction about moving forward with our concept for Hillside Park before I decided if I needed to put some extra underneath there. Um, we have installed, I'm sorry, installed hand sanitizers uh, in the park and we were able to uh, have the county supply us with a decent amount of hand sanitizer to fill those with. So um, they are located, there's two in Vets, there's two in Revere, there's one in Mary Ross, there's one at Canale and one at Temple. And I plan on installing one more up at the MIA park, but I have to figure out where to mount it first before we can do that. Um, there will be information going up in the park, uh, giving guidelines as to what you can do in the park, um, because there are some activities that are still excluded and not able to be done there. So I'm just going to quickly read to you the list of things that uh, you can do. Uh, everyone must 
Avoid close contact with people, even when outside, keeping a distance of at least six feet to slow down the spread of COVID-19. No large groups or gatherings that make it difficult to social distance. Wear a mask, especially if unable to social distance. And these are kind of really, really more for the playground equipment itself. It's a little hard to social distance on that gym apparatus when you're concerned if your child's going to fall off. And since it does usually mean that it's a family member, you are comfortable with saying this. Um, there is an exception for children under two are not required to wear masks, nor are people that have a medical exemption from it. Uh, we are asking if you are eating, please to sit at a table, on a bench, or on the ground before removing your mask. Uh, sanitize your hands before and after using the playground equipment. And then we said hand sanitizer are located in every village park. Children should be supervised at all times and assisted in using hand sanitizer as needed. Uh, we've asked avoid games and activities that require close contact. The basketball courts, we will open up one basket on each one. Uh, they're open only to one person shooting. There are no pickup games and only low risk sports activities are allowed at this time in the park. That means you can't do volleyball, you can't do football, you can't do kickball unless you are able to maintain social distancing and you're wearing a mask. Uh, uh, we are asking people not to share equipment such as bicycles, helmets, balls, and frisbees. We're asking them to avoid touching their eyes, nose, and mouth with unwashed or unsanitized hands. Our boat docks and launches are open and they have been open for a while. Um, I'm asking people, and we're putting it out there, to respect our parks, to clean up after themselves, and please put on garbage in garbage cans. We're asking them to respect our community and limit their time there so that all residents have an opportunity to enjoy the outdoors. We are asking people to stay home if they are sick or not feeling well. And if they are elderly or have an underlying medical condition that puts them at risk, that they remain in the safety of their homes and enjoy their own personal outdoor space. Those are the rules that are going to be going up in the parks. Does anybody have any comments or concerns about that? Nope. Nope, I'm good. All right, thank you, Cindy. Are, are there, is there anything else? Uh, yeah, I'm so low, I'm sorry. So there were several items that came in uh, on Facebook, not on our site, but they were things that were posted to face, uh, Facebook that I felt that I needed to address. Uh, one of them concerned the excess garbage in the bins at Vets Park. We only had two bins there. The other bins that we normally have there were removed because they were being moved and used as um, a way of climbing on top of the roof in the park. So uh, they had reduced it to just two cans. Um, after seeing the overflow of garbage yesterday, I uh, uh, called Heather McCormick and uh, requested that she uh, have uh, trustee you for proof that we were asking um, Royal Parting for an additional couple of uh, garbage cans at Vets Park uh, so that we can handle the, the amount of garbage down there. Um, I did go down and pick it all up, so it was all cleaned up. So I did respond to the person that had uh, posted that uh, through private message to tell them that, that that was taken care of. Um, there are also, uh, so moving forward, as it, since I'm on the topic of garbage, um, there was another question that came in with regards to the EDC's purchase of new garbage cans and um, uh, park benches, and when were they going to be installed? Um, I guess that it's been left up to me because I did get in contact with uh, Trent uh, Atkinson from EDC and uh, he said that, that they had turned that over to the village and that uh, we're expecting that the village would designate a person to, to make sure that they got involved. Uh, so I have um, had a conversation with the highway department that we will be putting those garbage cans in the area of um, from Spring Street to Gibbons Avenue on uh, East Main Street. And uh, I do have, did ask uh, Trent for a copy of their plan as to where they were going. So uh, we will try our best to try and follow that plan that he has. With regards to the park benches, 
Um, we are only going to install one at this time, and that is the one that is in front of wheel and seal. It is pretty badly rusted and um, in trying to improve the whole look of that whole area. And since we have been in conversations with uh, wheel and heel to possibly relocate some of the, um, uh, one of the trees and some bushes from Mary Ross Park over into that area in front that used to have an existing tree, um, I felt that was a good place to go. An additional concern that both I and Kitaji, the highway superintendent had, is that the park benches um, do call for them to be drilled into the concrete. And I think we need to think about that before we do it, because if we drill them in, I'm concerned that we're allowing uh, a nice pathway for water to go into that concrete. And we all know if that water freezes, it's gonna heat those sidewalks. So um, I think we need to come up, we need to think it out before we do it and uh, understand that if we do, we got to figure out some way of either sealing it so that we don't get water into it, uh, or um, perhaps relocate them maybe a little bit back into, you know, a grass area or some kind of a, you know, a dirt area that would require us getting into those beautiful sidewalks down on uh, East Main. Uh, any questions on that? Okay. Uh, I also believe, I think there was a question about uh, parking signage in the downtown area as well. Um, since uh, that has kind of become my responsibility as well, uh, we are going to revert to the plan that was initially designed uh, from a uh, committee that worked on um, the downtown revitalization uh, plan and also the brownfield plan. And um, so we will use that. Uh, I had already previously met uh, with the highway superintendent and Ken Huber. And we had walked out where we thought was the best place to do those signs. Uh, the signs are, we will use the, the design that was picked by that original group, which are circles. I did it with a large, they are green with a large P in the center and then municipal parking going around it. And they will be hung, kind of like we have the different business signs that are hung like on a, a bracket. So where we can, we will hang them on a bracket like that. And where we can't, they might be mounted onto an existing post. Um, so if there's any, have any questions, I'll wait for questions on that if anybody has them. Yeah, what's the funding situation for those? Do we have to allocate money for that, or do we have I, a project? I think, I'm sorry, Scott. I, I would think, I'm hoping that EDC took that into consideration. When, and they do have money in their budget, but it is not something that I discussed this time yet because I didn't know if we were gonna, I mean, I don't think it's a major cost, but I mean, it's a cost of these smallest I think that was, um, park benches. So, uh, um, you know, I'll have a conversation with EDC to find out, you know, if they have set aside funding for those. EDC wasn't paying for those, the village did. We got sent the wrong signs, so we have to order a new oh, one. I'm sorry, I thought you were talking about everything. I have like all of no, that. No, the order is not bringing it up. Oh, no, 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 I'm sorry. Not, not the parking signs, I should have been clear about that. Not the parking signs. The reason I bring the parking signs up is you're gonna have to probably ask, get the pricing and ask for that money again, because that was probably 2019 or 18, right, Mayor? So just, bringing that up. There's, I don't think it was budgeted for this year. Okay. Um, and then another thing that I brought up in that blurb that was shown was that next year is the 150th birthday of the Village of Rockingham Falls. It also is a major celebration for the uh, S.W. Johnson Fire Company. And I'm just letting people know at this point that our plan is to form a large committee very similar to what was created for the Centennial in 1971, uh, involving many organizations from the village, uh, the churches, the historical society, odd fellows, the Rotary Club, to make a, a large committee to plan activities and events uh, for uh, next year. Um, I'm being very, very optimistic about that we'll be able to do a really nice big celebration in the summertime. Our hopes is to do it. Uh, around the same time as the original picnic in the park, and maybe do something similar along those lines. A village resident, Bard Montross, 
I came across some information that her dad was the treasurer of the original picnic in the park committee had kept. And um, it's got some interesting information for us to look at and a uh, good, good jumping place off for coming up with maybe some events and activities that we can do. Um, go, going along with activities, uh, uh, I think this is probably, uh, I talked about Halloween and, and Christmas. We're gonna try our very best to do those celebrations the way we always have with some modifications. So um, we do have uh, dates picked out for those with a rain date, again, as I did with the uh, uh, summer concerts. Uh, they Google last year with us with the, uh, the Christmas one. Um, you know, I wasn't uh, aware that um, Missouri was having an event the following uh, weekend, which would have um, really been difficult for us to have two coexisting events. So uh, we took care of that and made sure we had backup dates to have those events so that, you know, we don't have to cancel out and not have anything to do. So um, I think that's uh, everything uh, I need to uh, go over. Um, uh, the flower, obviously, everybody knows the flowers and the plants are doing. They're out and blooming. So they're in the downtown and they're on the, the front porch. I think they look great. And we've had some great feedback on them as well. So that's, that's all I have to report unless somebody has other questions. Okay. okay. All right. Very good. Thank you, Cindy. Thank you, Thank you Cindy. Thanks, Cindy. Okay, uh, we do have with us Walter Burke, the new police commissioner, and um, I think our, Scott, are you guys going to do the uh, report? That's the month. statistics, or next month, ne next yeah, meeting. Next month. Okay, so um, at this time, I'd just like to introduce Walter, and uh, I know Walter is working on a. Uh, few things and Walter if you just want to tell us what you've got going on uh, now and uh, what's going on with the department that would be great. Sure Mayor. Um, first of all our lobby we opened up last week uh, for two persons to come in with masks on now. Uh, it's been closed for the last three months. The officers are meeting everybody outside in the parking lot so we're allowing people to come in. Uh, we still aren't taking civilian fingerprints or uh, child car seat installations yet, but we're hoping to start those soon, as soon as we know a little bit more as far as what's going on for safety. Um, presently, something really big going on, you know, with what's going on in the news with uh, police officers. We're doing de-escalation training. We're going to be starting that next month. I purchased a video, which the officers will be viewing and, and going over with their squad sergeants as far as uh, ways to talk about what they learned in the video. Um, but that's pretty much it for right now. Okay. Um, well, yeah, but Walter, you might want to mention that, you, you, you know, you've had discussions with um, what I'm sure every officer by now, and I, I, I think there's been some really positive changes there. I, and just sitting on the sidelines and watching you work, I think you've done some really good things and, uh, we appreciate it, and uh, it's been a pleasure to have you. So, uh, thank you, thank you, Scott. Make sure everybody was aware that there's a lot of positive things going on. I think the morale is a lot better than it's been in a long time, and and uh, I, I think it's it's just a very positive situation down there now. Thank you. I'm a new uh, trustee, and it's a pleasure to, to to see your face and meet you. And I look forward to. Uh, to talk to you in with person you. someday. <laughs> yeah, have a cup of coffee or, you know, come down. I, I'm at 64 South Museum. If you hear the music playing, it's me. Come by. Sure. Okay. Hopefully not come too loud, right? <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, no. I want to keep my hearing too. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, stop in and see me anytime you'd like. I sure will. Thank you. Okay. Um, uh, go ahead, Walter. Is there any other questions by anybody else? No. Walter will be with us at the. Um, at the monthly, at the uh, first meeting of the month from here on out. Is that good for you? The second, the second. Yes, no, no, well, I'll be doing that. Yep. So, um, and then uh, we'll make sure we get you up earlier uh, then. I, I just want to comment on, on a couple of things, though, that has to do with the recent um, police reform legislation that was passed up in Albany. So, you're 
probably going to be seeing uh, Walter quite a bit uh, between now mm -hmm. and uh, next April. And we're going to have to put together a committee and, and that committee is going to include the public and there's going to be new legislation that every municipality is that is going to have to uh, come up with and pass in mm -hmm. uh, in conjunction with all of um, you know the elected officials police departments um, and mm -hmm. that is uh, you know that's going to have to do with uh, the new reform and and how the police mm -hmm. is going to be uh, implementing new um, tactics so to speak mm -hmm. for, for uh, and that will be you know transparent and a public record so yeah. we have to comply with that by next April of 2021. Every municipality has to comply with that. Mm -hmm. So uh, there will be quite a bit um, to discuss in the future. Well, uh, this is a little early, but um, on June 19th, the, uh, I put out a memo um, from myself as mayor and uh, so are interested in putting together one of those committees uh, with the um, black community uh, that would engage with our uh, police department. And I've already talked to Walter about this. Uh, Walter was very supportive and uh, he was also very much looking forward to helping us get this going. And um, I, th I think we'll be talking about uh, the next meeting coming up and we'll have more mm -hmm. about that. Yeah. Good. So uh, it should be noted that uh, it was in the letter, but we did review, uh, Walter and I, the, the policies of our police department. And at the time uh, they were uh, stricter than the state guidance. And um, uh, we, we feel uh, we have a very community-oriented police department that do has done an excellent job at reaching out to everyone, but uh, we definitely want to make sure that everyone in the community has the feeling that they are being watched out for, and uh, that will be one of our next steps that we take. Mm -hmm. So we're, we're our job is to actually reach out to the community and encourage them to get involved in this process. Mm -hmm. well, very good. So we'll, I guess what we'll do is uh, we'll get the police committee and uh, myself and uh, Walter together and we'll talk about the, uh, so we made our statement before the state had actually released that, but we will um, get together and find out what this, what guidance the state has put together regarding that. Um, that mm -hmm. All right. Very good, Walter. Thank you for waiting for this and uh, we'll see you at the uh, first meeting in July. Okay, great. Thank you. Okay. Thank thanks, you, Walter. Right, thanks, bye -bye. Walter. Have a good night. Thanks, Walter. Okay. Uh, so the next item we have to talk about, are there any more questions about anything um, we've talked about so far? Oh, no. Okay, oh, no. so no, let me just make this, let's just, uh, so we do are in receipt of a um, resignation from one of our police officers and um, I have a resolution for it. Is this something I should read? Yeah, yeah. So, okay, so uh, whereas Mark Boltz has faithfully and diligently fulfilled the duties as a police officer for the village of Wappingers Falls Police Department. Hold on, I'll show this. So whereas Mark Volz has faithfully and diligently fulfilled the duties of a police officer for the village of Wappingers Falls, and whereas Mark Volz has tendered his resignation effective June 17th, and whereas it is the desire of the mayor and the board to honor his service and to accept with appreciation his resignation, now therefore be it resolved, and we'll ask for a, a motion for this, that the resignation of Mark Volz as a police officer for the village, effective June 17th, is accepted. Be it further resolved that Mark Volz is hereby commended for his dedicated professional service on behalf of the village, its residents, and the public, 
and be it further resolved that the mayor and the village board of trustees for themselves and for all residents of the village do hereby express their sincere appreciation for Mark's service and extend their best wishes and that this resolution shall take effect immediately. Uh, and I would just like to um, express my own appreciation for all of my dealings with Mark Boltz. He was a, uh, definitely a um, uh, community representative for the police department for Wappingers Falls, and uh, he was a very caring officer, watched out for our community in a, in a in a very careful way. And one of the things that I remember about Mark was that he always was uh, sure to make sure that mothers had their children in the correct kind of seat as they were uh, out there. And, and he would, um, he, he felt very strongly about that. And that was very useful for the village. Okay, anybody else want to say anything about Mark? I, I remember. But my only encounter with Mark was very early on when we moved to the village, and it was the same thing. He adjusted my kids' car seats. Yeah, good. <laughs> sure they were in right. Yeah. yeah. So I don't. I mean, since then I would see him and I'm like, hi. <laughs> you know, we'd always, you know, always wait. He's a really nice guy. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I don't know if Walter, if you're there, if you want to say anything. With Mark, he's really dedicated to the department. Um, he left about a year ago, and then he. Uh, just, you know, didn't want to come by after his uh, leave of absence. But yeah, he was a dedicated officer to the department. That was three years ago when I worked with him. Yes. Okay, so uh, could we get a motion? I'll make it. Second? I'll second it. Seconded by Trustee Lammers. All those in favor? I'm going to do a roll call vote. Uh, Trustee Lammers? Aye. Trustee Davis? Aye. Trustee Panessa? Aye. Trustee Komornik is absent. Trustee Marco John? Aye. Trustee Huber? Aye. Okay. Uh, and that concludes uh, the printed. John, am I correct that that's everything on the printed part of the agenda? Uh, that is correct, Mayor, and you're going to have a re resolution 2020 20, of 2020 that you'll need to uh, discuss in executive session. Okay, so before we do that, is there anything that any board member wants to bring up at this time? I have something. Okay, go ahead, Scott. So I got a couple phone calls. Um, apparently, they um, there's folks that are having yard sales without going to the village to ask to have them. And um, I want to just see, I asked Brian to, uh, to hang in there for a few minutes and thanks for doing that, Brian Murphy. Um, I just want to see where we stand with them and, and just talk about it for a second. Um, there, there is a permit application and a $5 fee to have a yard sale, garage sale, um, and I, you know, they fill it out. They submit it as long as they haven't had one in the last ninety days. We issue it, and then we continue on, and that's that's really all. I haven't received any complaints in my office um, from any residents. Um, that's all I really have to say on that. Okay, so there's. Uh... The only reason I brought it up is because there's a lot of people that are having yard sales. I saw several signs this past weekend, the weekend before, but nobody's nobody's asking to have them at the village. So I just wanted to bring it up and make sure that uh, um, I just got word that the uh, we're allowed to have them as far as phase three goes. So I don't have a problem with that, but I just wanted to see where we stood. So we're good. It's all good. Okay, yeah, I mean, I'll look if, if, if I see the signs on the telephone poles where they don't belong anyway. Um, <laughs> you know, we, we can go oh, yeah, ask, obviously, the weekends, you know, I'm not really driving around the village much on the weekends. To, uh, gotcha. To look right. for them. Well, we can, we could also put something out in the next uh, polling to let people know what the process is. 
I, I don't want to be part of this, Walter. I don't want to be the uh, yard sale police, but uh, I just mm -hmm. wanted to make sure that folks know they should go register at the village hall. That's all. Right. All good. Yeah, if I if you have any complaints, I will advise them. <laughs> okay. Anybody else? Yes, Mayor. I, I just got a quick question. You you did say you were having a village board meeting next month at the village hall. Is that what you said? No, I said that we would need to, so we need to, uh, John Carge and I talked about the spacing requirements that we have down there, and I think um, in, as we were inspired by the town of Wappinger's uh, layout, maybe that's something that we could go to. So it's possible that we might be able to have a, uh, a meeting uh, that would be a limited attendance. I'm not sure what the requirement is for the, um, it may still require, because of the limit to the attendance, the the online presence, and uh, so we would have to to look into that. But we will um, look more into that this, at the end of, by the end of this week. All right. And also, I got another thing. Uh, I was in talking with, with John Carge about the uh, heating and cooling contract. He's like it's, it's getting out of hand. And, uh, I don't know how the board feels about that maybe send out the heating cooling for bid for bidders. Maybe John can help us out with this. I mean, you can, well, you know I, a little more about it. We we're just yeah, talking about it. I've I been involved. Bring it up to the board. I've been involved as a building manager for about 18 years now, and we've tried different things. Having one contractor paying one contractor to maintain our equipment on a monthly basis, to me, makes no sense. I'd like to bring a contract, I'd like to have contractors on board, like we do for the plumbing and the electrician. I can get one for the, for the maintenance of the oil burners, and I can get one for the air conditioning. We don't have a whole lot of equipment that we need to pay over $2,000 a month to maintain. And it always seems like whenever something goes wrong, it's a la carte. We're not only paying for the service, but then we got to pay for the repair too. I, I would like to respectfully ask the board to let me go out, solicit bids for two things. One for the oil burner service and one for the air conditioning. Just like I did for the uh, plumbing and the electrician. So John, I think that's a good idea, but you should also ask and as part of that, uh, for emergency time and materials numbers so that if it's the middle of a winter night and we have to replace a furnace that if, if that's what we have to do that we have pricing from them if they're capable of doing that if they're not capable of doing that it would be just as good to have another organization different from that one also give us pricing so uh, it could be the same or uh, a different organization uh, correct, Mayor. I, I would ask for a, a weekly rate, you know, an hourly rate for during the week, a Saturday rate, and a Sunday holiday rate. That's what I get from the plumbers. That's what I get from the electrician. But also talk to uh, somebody about adding in the emergency installation of a, uh, a, so that we're able to do that if we have to. All right. Thank you. Is everybody good with that? I'm good. Yeah. Okay. So uh, there's no uh, there's no requirement to um, vote, but we will uh, come back with them to put that out to bed. All right. Anybody else? Um, I'm not sure if this is the time and place, but um, I would like to try to move forward with filling the spots on the planning board. So I don't know if it's it's up for discussion this evening or an executive. So yeah, we would talk about that in executive, just like I said on the text. Okay. That we were talking earlier. Okay. Um, the next. Uh, so I did. We do have a form that people can fill out, and um, it is on the village website, and it's a comment form. We did get three comments, Cindy. Refer, uh, referred to them, but I'm going to read them here into the record. Uh, and 
make sure that John has them. So the first comment that we got was from a resident on Spring Street and uh, Chelsea Aker, and she talks about upkeep of the public parking area and the dock at the end of North, at the north end of Spring Street. And she says, I've seen a rise in the amount of people who are frequenting the Wappingers Lake public dock on Spring Street. Since I live next door, I'm happy to see people using the park and dock more, but I have also witnessed a ton of garbage littered all over, fast food containers, beer cans, napkins, and used condoms. For one, this makes me sad that people don't seem to treat our village with care, but also what a horrible sight for anyone to see. We are lucky to have such wonderful public spaces, but they need to be cared for. I do not think the answer is trash cans, but signs to remind people to take their garbage with them like many parks do. Also, there needs to be regular upkeep just like any other park. I've never seen anyone except for the mowers for Vets Park once a week. I think it is amazing that the village is cleaning up the lake daily with the skimmer boat, but if you want more people to use the lake, then the public area around the dock needs to be cared for as well. Another concern is the actual state of the parking area. My family moved in three years ago when the pipes were being replaced and all the roads repaired, except for the end of Spring Street past the corner of Pelham. This area is used heavily all year long, summer for people visiting the dock and winter due to the snow ordinance. Every year there are more cars, so I feel confident saying that the designated parking area needs to be expanded. I hope I've made it clear that I am not just a disgruntled resident wanting the area outside our house fixed up. I have just, I have firsthand experience of how much this area gets used by taxpayers and I believe it is in Village's best interest to show pride in our public spaces by keeping them clean, functional and beautiful. Thank you, Chelsea Aker. And the second comment, uh, sorry, shoot that we got is from Melissa Ebneter uh, of Six Trebucco Place. And she's also writing to us about Vets Park. Kindly me in the village on the amount of trash cans from Royal has decreased over time. And we are presented with one trash can presently. That's a question. Litter is everywhere, which means animals also with high 80 degree weather brings out a stench. What are, are our options for a remedy on this issue? And uh, we are also in receipt of a comment from Matthew Desiderio uh, from uh, West Main Street. And he says, uh, hi all, it was my understanding that new trash cans, benches, and parking signs were purchased by the village quite some time ago. I have not seen any of those to be put to use. Can you please clarify if we do in fact have those items and what the plan and time frame is to display them all. I think now with the good weather and people looking to get outside would be the ideal time for us to make use of them and attract foot traffic to the village to aid the small businesses. So uh, Matt, I believe is on the Economic Development Committee. So uh, those comments, I believe, were all addressed by uh, Cindy. I'm not sure if anybody on the board wants to comment on them, but we'll uh, give them also to the Highway Committee to take back to um, Pete and to see if uh, you can address those items. Is that okay, Kevin? I think we've already addressed them, Matt. It's Cindy. Okay. All right. those, those garbage cans are going out Friday. So. It's the, you know, we're just doing the one part bench. And I, I mean, I think it's just as easy that I have the conversation with Pete, if that's okay. Oh, okay. All right. Because, good. you know, I'm the one riding around with him, putting them up. Okay. So. All right. Very good. Okay. Uh, so that concludes the comment portion. Is there anybody uh, on YouTube or uh, here who is not on the board that would like to make a comment? And uh, Brian, do you want to say a few words as new trustee? Um, yeah, I just would like to say uh, hello, everyone. And uh, this is a this is a, a very very big deal for me, and I'm going to just do my best for uh, my neighbors here in the village. And uh, 
your uh, any silly questions I ask, please forgive me. <laughs> okay, anybody else have anything to say? And we're waiting to see if there is anybody from the public who is on YouTube who would like to make a comment. And the way to do that is to go onto the Village website and uh, click on the Zoom information that's listed there for the June 24th, 2020 meeting. Uh, so is there any other trustees or anybody here present in the Zoom right now that would like to make a comment? Okay, we'll wait a few more. And I think we can, uh, I'd like to, so we do have a few items that we need to talk about, uh, but I'm gonna ask that we go into executive session. One, I, at least one item will result in a vote. Uh, they have to do with personnel. Uh, there is a bargaining uh, agreement issue that we have to talk about. And is there anything else, Craig? No, just the uh, the litigation matter. Okay, and a litigation matter. So there's three. Okay, so. Um, okay, Mayor, into the executive session. Um, do uh, Walter and Brian go in there, or just the uh, the six other board member boxes? So. Uh, we're going to go into executive session with all six members of the board, and that includes uh, the new trustee, Brian Lammers, uh, Scott Davis, Mary Panessa, Kevin Huber, who has Billy Markajan with him, and uh, myself and the attorney. Okay, uh, I'm going to make that room now. You'll be in it in a moment. Okay, could we get a motion to go into executive session? I'll make it. All right. I'll second. Seconded by Trustee Panessa. All those in favor? Aye. Okay. So you're going to get a request up to go into a uh, side room. And so when it, if you get requested to do something, just say it's okay that you want to do it. And you all have my phone number if you need more instructions. Okay. So. All right. We're all here. I'm here. Can you see me? Yeah. Is Mary here? I'm here. Okay. Okay. Um, so uh, we have on June 16th, uh, I received. Um, I had discussed with the planning board chair on tonight was my intention to discuss with this board the appointment of Adam Loricella to the planning board as the uh, member who would fill out the rest of Trent Atkinson's appointment, which I believe ends in April of 2021 and for the appointments for alternates to go to Donnie McCormick and Joe Simone. Joe submitted his resume and uh, we have it. And so he's uh, highly qualified in his administrative position and is a new resident, but is a new resident of the village of Wappingers Falls. So I'd like to ask the board if we could uh, make motions uh, first, for Adam Loricello to fill out the uh, planning board seat as a permanent member whose seat would be up for reappointment in April of 2021. And I'd like to ask if there's a motion. I'll make I'll the make motion. It. Okay, so I'll take Kevin Huber's motion in a second. Second. Second by Trustee Panessa. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Abstain. Okay, and one abstention, and so uh, I've got three, and I will uh, add my name to that too. So it's uh, four, four votes, so that passes. 
And the next item is I'd like to ask if we could get a motion to appoint Donnie McCormick and Joe Simone as alternates to the planning board who's and those appointments would be up and uh, after the September 15th election. I'll make that motion there. Okay, second. Second. Seconded by Trustee Panessa. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any, opposed? Any opposed? And no abstentions, right? Nope. Okay. All right, we also have to, uh, I have to do a stipulation and so, pull that up. So I want to ask if I could have a uh, resolution number 20, 202020 of 2020, resolution authorizing stipulation of agreement with Police Benevolent Association of Wappingers Falls in connection with PERB case number U37015. I'll make it. Okay, and could I get a second? Sure. Seconded by, I didn't hear who seconded that. Bill Markajan. Billy Markajan, and all those in favor, I'm gonna do a roll call for this one. Uh, Trustee Panessa. Aye. Trustee Markajan. Aye. Trustee Huber. Aye. Trustee Davis. Aye. And I'll say aye too. Okay, uh, and then we'll mark uh, Trustees Kamornik and Lammers uh, as absent. Okay, and at this time I'd like to ask if I could get a motion to adjourn. I'll make it. Second. Second. Seconded by Trustee Panessa. All those in favor? Aye. Okay. Thank you. Have a good night, guys. Yeah, you too.